everybody, welcome back to our channel. This is Sarah with an H and Sarah without an H. And we are a married couple. With a blazer. A couple of hot dogs. <laughs> I don't know what any of that was. Are you a hot dog? Hey, if you wear a blazer too, we could be blazer babes. Ah, um, how are lesbians? <gasps> How's it going? Okay, someone in the comments um, was t uh, said, "Hey, listen to the Megan Rapino Julie Foudy vodka podcast, the mm -hmm. Megan Rapino Julie Foudy podcast." Because right. I mean, Megan Rapino um, is our hero, is my gay hero. I'll say it till the day Gyro. I die. Oh, your gyro, my gyro, gyro. Next one, I gyro right now. She's my gay hero, um, and she was on Julie Foudy's podcast. And she talks a lot about a lot of things. We're only going to listen to a couple of clips here because I think you should go find it and listen to it. Um, whether or not, you know, if you watch our channel, then you must be a somewhat of a soccer Megan Rapinoe. Are you emotional about this? I always get emotional. I'm Mrs. Emotional. We watched this show, um, Worst Cooks in America, and everyone starts crying on it for like no reason. <laughs> and Sarah goes, you should be on the show. The blue show. team is the crying. Yeah, they're always crying about something, <laughs> like for the people. Um, so we're going to listen to the end. They talked about a oh lot of subjects, goodness. and we're only going to go through a few. Okay. Um, there are so many things. Oh, Cut that. I'm embarrassed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we're going to go through a couple things. Song. Then we're going to talk about it. So okay. we're going to go through a few clips, um, and okay. then we're going to talk about it. All right. Because that's what we do here on the Sarah Sarah Show. It's not Miley and Manders. <laughs> I'll tell you that. It's like a thing. That anyone remember that? Uh, I got it. Okay, so the first clip is going to be about Megan Rapinoe. Part of her being my gay icon or icon is she speaks out before anyone, even before it's not the popular thing to do. She's always spoken out when she has to take a chance. Right. Yeah. And Julie she's asks her, "Why? what has given you that fortitude to say, I'm going to speak before no one else does? And then yeah. Pino's answering, so we'll say, we'll, we'll see what she says, or we'll, she'll just going to try to talk about it but you've always done that before the collective has and have been unapologetic about it. What do you attribute that courage to and being ahead of the curve? Hmm. Um, I mean, I'm ahead of the curve for white people. I, I guess I'm not necessarily right. ahead of the curve for white allies. Right. Um, I mean, I'm sure part of it's just, you know, my personality. I don't know. Um, I also yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. Just good. it is my responsibility. I, I really do feel like that. I mean, I think growing up on the women's national team and having, as you well know, and there's, you know, threads through me that, that went through you and, and the players before you, we know what, at least in some part, what discrimination feels like. We know that, you know, just because we are women, we were treated differently, mm -hmm. paid differently, resourced differently, looked at differently, marketed differently, um, and less. And so, mm -hmm. you know, sort of growing up in that environment of going through CBA negotiations and then, you know, being gay and understanding, mm -hmm. you know, at times I've looked at the flag and not had all my rights protected by that flag and had to come out and and knowing that I've asked people to stand by me and mm. to fight for my rights, maybe yeah. it doesn't affect them, but I've asked that of them. And so, you know, when Colin now in 2016, it just seemed like if I just have a personal belief that like everybody has a responsibility to make the world a better place mm. in whatever way they can be most effective. I just happen to have a big platform. I happen to be playing on the women's national team. I happen to be an athlete in a country that glorifies athletes and mm. asks them to be role models and to um, yeah. stand up for what's right and to do the right thing. And so for me personally, I've, I've thought, honestly, more athletes and more people and, uh, you know, the country would have, and that, that was very naive of me, I guess, but I thought it was so that. clear. Yeah. It seemed so clear to me. We so she talks about it seems so clear to her, you know, it's like not even, a, it's not even a choice. It's not even like she's saying, I mean, she just, that's what she just has to do. Well, yeah. And it's just, it go, goes back to the thing of everybody deserves basic human rights. Right. And, you know, 
Right, right. Like everybody deserves that, right? And she wants to make sure that she's that gonna, ev- yeah, she's that, gonna say that. Yeah, that she's advo- advocating, mm-hmm. advocating for that. Yeah, um, because it's just innate in her. Yeah, and what a queen. Yeah, and Julie, and Julie thought he re- talks about that. That it, and for the soccer to have someone like her to be on the forefront of these issues, you know, it's just so special because a lot there's a lot of sports out there. This person happens to be in soccer. That in soccer gets dragged every opportunity, especially right. the women's soccer gets dragged every opportunity. Mm-hmm. They, people want to drag soccer. They want to drag women's soccer. Just like Megan, Megan says, you don't. You're not treated like you're an athlete. You're not treated like you're marketable. You're not treated like this and that. So that was the it. Only drag I want to see is drag, baby. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh. So the next part um, that we're gonna listen to is. Megan just says something kind of funny. It's only the long clip, but I think it's just a funny clip that just shows her personality. The, the unflappability, though, of your approach and the authenticity of your approach, mm-hmm. which has always impressed me. Have you always been like that? Like as a little whippersnapper <laughs> kind of floating through life in, in terms of just like everything seems to roll off your back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no problem. I got this. Yeah. Um. I mean, I think there is an element to that. I have, you know, unwavering confidence, honestly, whether it's wanted or not. I just I don't know why I have it, but... but Girl, send some this way. I'm really impossible to embarrass. Uh, um, where does that come from? Because I actually need some of that mm-hmm. in my life. I don't know. I mean, who who knows? It's, I, don't, I don't know if it's earned the way that I just why I have it uh, I'm not sure sometimes it suits me well and then sometimes I'm like okay you need to take a step back uh, <laughs> no I don't think I think I grew into this I mean I think the, at the essence that the streak is there but I think I did grow into it you know having my experience informed by the women's national team by CBA negotiations by coming out mm. and then in that process you know educating myself and reading a lot and listening to people and you know, having thought partners and people who challenge me and, you know, I'm, I'm very close to my family. And so I have this sense of, um, you know, uh, this like very true mirror for me. And they'll always tell me whether I want them to or not, whether it's invited or not, it's usually not invited. (laughs) They will always tell me exactly what they think, what they feel. So I feel that once I get into the position where I'm, you know, speaking to a big audience, like I'm not worried about what they think mm. because I feel like I already know what I think and what the people who I love think. And also speaking for people who don't have a voice, mm. you know, part of yeah. this pay equity lawsuit for us, uh, a huge part really is like, yes, of course it's important for us. Okay. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. She has unwavering confidence, warranted or not, which I love. I love because I think especially as women, we're told, don't you have too much confidence. Don't be too confident. Mm. You know, especially like men's sports. Oh yeah, go beat them. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, they're all cocky. Yeah, and it's like you have to have that confidence, right. and you're supposed to have that. Yeah, and if you don't, then you're soft or whatever. But I think the opposite is true too. If men show too many emotions, they're ostracized as well. So it's just the whole idea of these emotions are set for women. These are emotions are set for men, and they can never veer from that what society mm-hmm. has told us they can yeah um i think that's i don't think that's healthy i don't think that helps people no. i don't think you know but megan says i have confidence whether it's warranted or not you know and then, i don't know if we're gonna listen to it but at some point she just says i don't care you know i have nothing to lose after i came out or after i lived my life i have nothing to lose at this point especially succeeding so much already doing what she needs right. at this point she yeah. has nothing to lose to talk about yeah, marginalized her. groups uh, but she says she has confidence and like the other I'm not exactly sure who the other person on Julie's uh, she was like give me some of that how do you have just all that confidence because me and Sarah actually did a podcast about us not having a lot of confidence in a lot of different ways um, yeah. so check that out but <laughs> we we're not confident people by nature we are not confident people and so to get some of that confidence I love that yeah she needs to send some this yeah, way. Yeah, I love it. And I love that's a role model for young girls. Yeah. I'm confident. I'm not ashamed of being confident. I'm not going to lessen my confidence because you want me to not be confident. You know, I love that. Okay, so here Julie just asks her, how was quarantine? She, Julie knows she was quarantining with Sue. The whole world knows she was quarantining with her. Oh, yeah. Lover. Everyone knows. They were the most, quarant- <laughs> they were the most famous quarantine base. 
Famous, most famous quarantine couple. Oh yeah. Oh totally. Get an award for that. Totally. Hey, they deserve it. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, and here we go. Julie and I took a vote, and we have decided that you oh, yeah. two officially crush quarantine better <laughs> than anyone else. Quarantine days. And we were wondering though, um, what did you learn about not only yourself um. but about your relationship during quarantine? You know what? It's more like things have just been like reaffirmed or solidified. Mm -hmm. um, I talk really loud. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I am that. considerably less naturally considerate than Sue. <laughs> probably also, does not shock people. Um, <laughs> we actually really do like each other and are Aww. very compatible and yeah, get along. Uh, we're we're both homebodies in a lot of ways um and like that time i think we both kind of like recharge mm -hmm. at home together which is really nice um, normally we're you know traveling all around and it's crazy and so of course we enjoy our time at home but i think you know particularly this last year has been hard in a lot of ways not just because we've been away from each other so much but we've had a lot going on and there's you know an increased attention and you know our mm, you know, that's true. my life and our life together and her life it all it's changed crazy. very quickly yeah. so you know to have to have a time where the only thing you can do is just sit and be together uh, we feel very thankful for and we're you know very lucky to have that opportunity and it was you know the best thing we could do for the country was to just sit and yeah. stay in our homes and I think with that you know, prior to the protest, obviously just, just talking about COVID and quarantine. Okay. I think that is just so indicative that they're meant to be together. They're going to get married. Because yeah. you stay at home with someone for four months. Yeah. If you survive quarantine, you can survive anything. Yeah. Like if you're out at home with them for four months and at the end of that four months, you just said, I had a good time. This is meant to be, you're with them 24 seven. That's a relationship that I believe is going to work. Yeah. You know, um, because if you couldn't stay at home, you'd say, you know, this really isn't for me. I mean, I do think sometimes, I actually think sometimes being alone with your significant other is a good slash bad thing. Because Sarah and I sometimes talk about this. If we were around other people, like our families more, it throws different equations into there to maybe create more fights. Well, yeah, when you have different personalities around yes so i think yeah but at the end of the day they spent four on uh, three or four uninterrupted months together mm -hmm. they know if they're personally compatible yeah. um and they yeah they crush quarantine we're crushing quarantine yay and they also said megan's the least um considerate after after the sid larue clarisonic uh story they, i think we got that yeah I th exactly um but she talks <laughs> loud you know they're gonna have their little squabbles just like sarah and i do but they're That's so funny. If they're meant to be they're meant to be um or like she talks too loud because they were like in a pretty small apartment for them they're superstars but i wonder if she's like if um so she's like shh i have neighbors you know what I mean? voices. into her voices exactly okay so this next clip megan <clears throat> she's like, megan i mean what Megan was talking about in this interview, you know, there's a lot like, is it, please listen to the interview. There's a lot to, they talked about that oh, we're not here. here. There was a kind of an ongoing theme that Megan doesn't even know if she's going to ever play again in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? Really? She's still saying the Olympics might not even happen next year. We just don't know. And at the end of the day, huh. it's kind of like, when will Megan play? And Megan's, in, my, in Megan's headspace, that's not even on the forefront because you can't prepare for something that you don't know it's going to happen when it's safe because megan still says right. i don't find it safe out there i'm not going to play until i feel 100 percent safe but will my body be ready when it's safe again so yeah she's going to talk about that will she ever play again okay 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 did you ever have a moment with that delay that olympic delay and mm -hmm. all that you're doing i mean you're you're hosting you're like a talk show host you're hosting the yeah. Bidens. you have aoc on i mean you have <laughs> <laughs> on her instagram news, so i was like who is next with megan yeah, but did you ever have that moment of hmm? This might be a nice way to end things, right? You mm. won a World Cup. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. You have to train now a full another year oh, if the Olympics even yeah. happen. What keeps pulling you back to the sport? I mean, you know, it's interesting right now. I, I actually feel like I, I 
have no idea. Mm. I think this, it's still just there. So, you know, I, there's no decision really to be made one way or the other. Mm. Um, I've definitely thought like, is this it? Mm. Because yeah. who knows if the Olympics will happen yeah. next year, right? Who knows if we'll play another national team this year, uh, a national team game? Likely not, because no one wants to come here, and we're not probably going to be allowed <laughs> yeah. to go anywhere else, right? Right. Um, true, true, true. You know, I mean, for for both students, like I don't know, it's like if we don't get a vaccine for three years, we're not going to be playing sports, right? So I agree. I think there is that element, and again, kind of what I was saying before, like I don't know, and it's so uncertain that. I'm not putting a lot of time and energy into that. I would probably go absolutely nuts thinking about that. I still want to play. I still feel really energized. I'm, I'm hoping that the mm. Olympics can happen next year. Um, it'll be amazing if it does, because that likely means yeah. we have a vaccine or yeah. some sort of drug therapy. Um, but it's like, in the absence of it being a possibility, I, I am kind of focusing on other things and putting my energy somewhere and I, I am really enjoying that I've, mm. I've always felt you know my passions go far beyond soccer and into other things and so you know being frankly really really grateful to have this time to try out other things and mm. to do different things like and to be able to have that opportunity because I don't have soccer right yeah. now so right. when soccer mm. you know gears back yeah. up I'll be so you keep right doing. back in there uh. hopefully this layoff <laughs> doesn't just absolutely take me out of it <laughs> you know. okay so she talks about so i mean she says a lot that she just basically says and i agree with her until i get a vaccine i'm not going to feel comfortable mm -hmm. and I, so she says that but you know basically what she said she's exploring other opportunities she's enjoying doing the other things you know interviewing people the re-ink um company she has yeah got a company but we always also have to remember Megan Rapino has accomplished everything you can in the sport of soccer everything practically yeah so for her to say she's done playing going out right now that's a dream career she has had a dream career oh yeah so it's not she's in a unique perspective like that it's not like other people who try to make a team who want to get an Olympic medal like we talked about Kristen Press doesn't even have an Olympic medal yeah that's so wild. We talk about it could she be done? She could. And I don't think anyone would be surprised or even sad because we wouldn't be sad for her to be done. We wouldn't be sad for us. We'd say she seems like she's okay with it. Yeah. Like whatever happens, yes. she's cool. With exactly, it. exactly. I like that. I respect that. Um this is one more clip. She didn't realize it was frozen. And this clip I wanna to listen to because last year was such a pivotal moment for soccer in the US women's national team. Um, Megan Rapino shut Donald Trump up and nothing could be make people happier than that do you really? agree yes. to shut him up to say he's saying you practically suck you're American but you suck and you you're just a lesbian and you're just this <laughs> and Megan Rapino goes out there has oh, an amazing oh game God. has an amazing tournament and Donald Trump practically has to eat his words nothing mm -hmm. is better than that nothing so I'm listening to what they kind of talk about the game here right and kind of the response well, you should just have a podcast where you just praise Megan Rapino. I know. And I mean, the <laughs> thing is, I don't think she can do no wrong. She can do wrong. But everything she's done right. Okay, this is the last clip. Here we go. Intersected, and you could see this unflappability in full form, in full display. I, I think of the quarterfinal in, in France at the World Cup. All mm -hmm. three of us actually were there. I'm covering it. Lynn was there as a fan. You're, of course, playing in the game. And that game in Paris, the stadium is so loud. There's an incredible atmosphere, all French, right? American. Which was I amazing know. given how many Americans actually traveled over there. But in the middle of that, you're, the president of the United States is tweeting at you, right? To, yeah. to walk the walk. You've got all of the noise about the equal pay lawsuit. And in that moment, you just take over the game. Early mm -hmm. in the game too. I mean, what, what is that mindset yeah. as you're preparing for that match? I know, so much pressure. I mean, mm -hmm. I really do like love the biggest moments. They're just the most fun. And Julie, I mean, you can, you can attest to this, I'm sure. And, you know, playing at the Rose Bowl in front of 90,000 will be better than playing anywhere with less people it's just like it's mm -hmm. just better how and fun so, is it ah, it's insane i mean for me i i view myself um 
as an entertainer, first athlete, closely second behind that. But like sports is entertainment, right? So it's like you might as well have fun with it. You work. I don't like do all this you know, training on my own when no one's <laughs> watching. Yeah. And frankly, no one cares, and it's miserable, and I don't want to be doing it to get to the biggest moment to like not enjoy it. I'm like the only reason I'm doing all this <laughs> is so I can get. So, you know, first and foremost, it's like you're in the World Cup, right? You're you're in the World Cup. This is this is amazing. You get to play in the game everyone circles on their calendars. You get to play the French who desperately want to beat you. <laughs> but deep down, do they really think they can? And that's no. the feeling I always have about the French. And even the French fans, like yeah, even, exactly. you know, standing there for the French national anthem and, you know, just it chills, like, yeah. you know, chills because just so much pride and so much excitement in that building and you know them wanting to beat the Americans so bad but I think there's also a deep sense of respect for our mm. team and I've always had a sneaking yeah. suspicion the French like me a lot more than they let on <laughs> and so there was like a little bit of that going on um but really yeah, just confidence. a whole yeah, exactly. tournament I mean we saw it from you know the very first game against okay so that okay that clip really wasn't about Donald Trump necessarily but I think she had she had so much weight carried on her back if she failed people could drag her for ever forever for being all talk and no action for being oh you think you're the best you think you you deserve equal pay but you lost um donald trump saying you basically suck you're this or that and if she lost donald trump you're a loser you know she had so much pressure and weight on her back and what did she do? She went on there and smashed it. You know what I mean? So you think you can dance? And she danced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said she likes that pressure. You know, when we talk about athletes or when people talk about athletes, what they talk about is it's they want to say 50-50, 80-10, 80-20. It's a mental game too. Oh, you yeah, know what totally. I mean? Eighty percent of it Oops. is can you perform when the the moments happen? You know, and gymnastics gets us a lot. Sorry, I have to have a gymnastics point because gymnastic <laughs> is 80% mental. These gymnasts can do what they can do in training, but can they do it at the Olympics, at the moment? You know what I mean? And Megan yeah. Rapinoe said, I can do it. You know, I've trained, like they, she said, she trains when people aren't watching, when it's not cool, when it's just her in her backyard. You need to talk about times where you just touch a train because you want to get to the big stage and you want to smash it. That's what Peter did. She smashed Donald Trump and said, smash, smash, smash. smash. She got Donald Trump. She says, you know, I don't care what you say. I'm, I'm going to show you that you think this, this, well, I'm the best. And then Donald Trump like literally had to eat his words. And that's like the best feeling ever. And he's been eating ever since. Yeah, <laughs> he really has. <laughs> Eats a lot. Um, so this is a great interview. Uh, it's on Julia Fowdy's podcast. Check it out if you're a Pino fan, if you're a soccer fan, if you're a human rights fan, you know what I mean? Because if you're human, if you're human, and she does talk a lot about like Black Lives Matter and, and important things, but um, I thought it was interesting. Love Pino, love what she stands for. We're big fans. Questions, comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Third time's charm. Thank you guys so much. Questions, comments, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye.